Hey guys, welcome to the Crypto is Coming channel. Today's video, I will be talking a little bit more about the swing trading model that I made in my first swing trading video. So if you're interested in learning about what swing trading is and some of the basics, I recommend you head over to my channel and you'll find that video here. At the end of the video, I actually showed a MATLAB model that I had tried to put together that would be able to provide good times to buy and sell if you are looking at long-term swing trading. However, before we get into the details of the model, I did want to point out that in my previous video, there was an error with my code. So I projected a 20% profit from these cells shown here. But if you really think about it, if you see all these cells right here and then this buy back in at a much higher price, it wouldn't make sense for that to net a profit. The issue ended up being that every time I was making a sell or these red lines, I was selling a percentage of my starting bag and not a percentage of my current bag. So in this video, I will present an updated model as well as going over the basics of the original model just to kind of let you guys know what's going on behind the scenes. So first off, let's look at what I call the version one model. So basically it's just a simple algorithm that checks for certain criteria. And if that criteria is met, then it suggests either to sell or buy. So what I've done is I've input all the data for the last year. So this is from March 19th, 2020 to March 19th, 2021. So this is basically at the bottom of the crash last March, all the way up till now where we are sitting at current highs. And the coin I am looking at for this video and for this demonstration is Cardano. So from Yahoo Finance, I imported all of the price data. However, they only provide the high and the low of each day. So I simply took the average of those two values and that is the current price. And the logic behind this first model was to simply determine the most recent low price. So based on the current day, it would search back for the most recent low. And then it would sell when the percent change from that last lowest price was greater than a certain set percentage or what I call A. So basically, if you look over here, we see that there's a big rise right here. And after that big rise, we sell because it had raised a certain percentage. Then in order to make profit by swing trading, you need to buy back in at a lower price. So then what I had it do was look for a change from the most recent high price. And if it was greater than a certain negative percentage, so if it had dropped, then buy back in. The main issues that I found with this first model was that if a bad sell were to happen, then you cannot buy back in because the model doesn't know the logic behind a bad sell. So there was no criteria set up to buy back in. Also, another of the main issues is that it cannot detect a slow move. So what I mean by this is normally the price will move in small pieces. So it'll jump 10%, drop 5%, then jump 20%, etc. But this original model was only looking for the most recent jump. So if you look over here, we see a lot of these small rises would probably be triggered by the model. However, they take several days to rise. And this model does not know how to handle that. And here is the result of that model. So based on the optimal conditions for A and B, I was only able to net a 1% profit over just holding. So this is the actual output of my original model with the issue in the code corrected. So a 1% gain is not very good at all. However, I felt like there was a lot of things I could improve about the model to ensure higher profits. So the first issue I wanted to tackle with updating my model was to make a new determinant for when to sell. So this model right here is selling after a rise of a certain percentage from a minimum. So what I wanted to do to improve this model was to simply look for these maximum values and then detect when you are going down the peak. So once you have rised a certain percentage and you have dropped a certain percentage from that top, that is where you will sell. This way you know that the price is no longer rising and you know that it is dropping and normally after big gains there is a pretty decent correction so if you time it correctly you will be able to capture a small percentage of profit every time the price goes up and then drops and then to ensure you're capturing profit you want to buy back in only after dropping a small percentage from your sell doing this will allow you to capture small profits on most price action so I feel like this would be the optimal way to set up a new model. So now that I've kind of visualized what I tried to do in my version two model, let's 
kind of jump through the logic that I used for this second model. So I am using the same data. However, I am determining how to buy and how to sell differently. So now every day I am calculating all of the maximums and all of the minimums over the whole history. And I am storing all of those values. And then I will only sell when the max change over the last three minimums is greater than a certain percentage. So this is a way to capture a large rise that happens over several periods where it rises and dips. So if the price is looking like this, my previous code was only checking against the previous minimum, but this code now checks against all three of these minimums here. And then not only is it checking for that to make sure that the price has rised, it is also looking for a decrease in the price from the most recent maximum. So it will check and see if the price has started to dip down. And once it has dipped down a certain percentage from that maximum value, it will then trigger a sell. So while this was an improvement over the original model, it would still sometimes sell multiple times during these dips. And then that would make a higher chance for it to be a bad sell. So to prevent this, I implemented the logic that if the most recent max is closer than the most recent min, that it could only sell one time. So in order for it to sell again, the price would have to go back up and then back down again. Next, I looked at implementing the best buy strategy for this new selling strategy. And the best buying strategy is to implement a change from the last sell price. So if the price has dipped a certain percentage from the sell, then buy back in. So if I continue this graph down here, Let's say I drop down 2% here and I wanted to take a 2% profit, then I would simply buy back in right here. And now I am ensuring myself a small piece of profit. Taking these small bits of profit is much more beneficial than my previous strategy because this model is calculating data only from the history. So at the time of this buy, none of this information here is known and only what is happening previously. So there's no way of knowing if the price is going to dip deeper so there is some optimal value of this buyback percentage that will optimize your profit. And finally, the last buying criteria. So this one up here is an and. However, this is an or. So why we need this or is that sometimes we might make a sell. That is what is considered bad, where we sell and then we aren't allowed to buy back in meeting our criteria. So if I sell and then the price were to jump immediately back up, my, my buying criteria would never have been met. So we need to implement a way so we can buy back in. Otherwise, the model can no longer trade. So this criteria for buying back in after a bad sell is to wait a certain amount of days. And if you have not successfully bought back in yet, then to wait for the next dip. Continuing with the same example, we weren't able to buy back in at this price because the price continued to rise. We will wait for the next maximum. And then once that price has dipped a certain percentage from that maximum, we will then buy back in here so that we can continue swing trading forward and hopefully making back up for that bad sell. Moving on to looking at the results of this new implementation, we see that this in turn will net us a 55% profit if we're looking at the last year of Cardano price. And as you can see, there is a lot more trades happening because it is able to detect these smaller gains that happen over several days. And then you can also see that these sells are no longer happening during the rise, but after the top of these peaks. And it is important to note that we do have several bad sells. So here's an example of a bad sell. And here is also a bad sell right here because we had to buy back in. But these buyback ins are happening during dips, so that is not hurting the profits too much. So I just built this model to have some fun, and I thought it was a really cool demonstration of how you can analyze some historic data and how you can put together a model that could give you some signals for when good times would be to swing trade. And I also just noticed that this says V1 at the top, but this is V2. Moving forward, I might look into implementing a series where I kind of track the updates on this model. However, at that point, I would have to finalize and narrow down one specific model I'm running with specific uh, values for the constants that I'm calling back here. So A, B, and C here are the certain percentages that will determine if a sell or a buy happens. So right now I have only manually tweaked them, but there is methods I could perform to help try and optimize these certain criteria to then optimize profit when looking at historic data. 
So that might be something I look at in the future. I've also looked into creating a similar model, but looking at hourly data. However, this results in 24 times the amount of data that the model has to analyze. So it makes some of these calculations a lot different. So I still think I have a long ways to go with developing that model, but I think this was a cool demonstration of setting up a model that would net a 55% profit only doing kind of some long-term swing trading. That concludes my video today talking about my updated MATLAB model. I know this video is a little different than my normal ones, so if you did like it, make sure you let me know down in the comments and give the video a like. And if you guys did like it, I will try and make some more and continually showing you guys improvements. And I also might look into actually implementing the model and kind of doing uh, weekly or monthly updates about the profits. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.